Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Sohi Azman. And we have your companies in the news today. We are looking at Zealand. Actually, there was a whole bunch of announcements today, but we liked Zealand because they actually went up about 7.5% to 28.5 cent. I suppose the reason why I was attracted was, hey, 28.5 cent, why can you go wrong? If you actually bought it at like 25, at least you made 3 cent. And it's been up on an uptrend since like August, as you can see in the share price chart. So yeah, Zealand actually won, just to, to, just to summarize what they actually did, basically they bagged a subcontract work with uh, about 80, well, about 97 million with some spare change from a consortium led by, uh, of course, major shareholder MMC and Sumitomo Consortium. They are going to uh, construct Langat Centralized Sewage Treatment Plant, a, a work that, I mean, a piece of project that I would almost say has been in development hell. What do, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the issue behind them was it dated back all the way since Sanskrit Khalil Ibrahim, right? Oh my goodness, has it been that long? Yeah, it's almost as maybe yeah. we should all get into our time machines and move forward. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we'll have to see. So it's going to be done on a joint venture basis. And what I looked at this is like, it's also like we've been talking about MMC for quite a while, mostly because yesterday they wanted to take NCB uh, private. They wanted to raise their stake in it. Today, now Zealand's winning. It's good to be part of the big boys club, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it does as well. I know. I think you know you can also capitalize on the big boys' uh, uh, performance and and also a lot of other uh, good things coming in. Well, especially. That, uh, what do you think of that order book, though? Tell, you look. At, you were looking at it. Well, the order book is actually quite sizable, though, because you know the project is ninety-seven million. You know they also have another two hundred and forty-eight point five million contract in Johor, another two hundred forty-eight point seven million contract in Terengganu, and also elsewhere. And I think that one of the catalyst for this project is that they are going to build Gomba Integrated Transport Terminal worth 308 million ringgit. But the thing is, this project, right, it, it is still uh, ongoing in discussion with the government. It has gone way back before because of the fact that the project is sitting on the land or Malay reserve land status. Yeah, but the company, right, um, the, the issues that I have is that I looked at their latest earnings, uh, their latest 2Q earnings. Profits uh, respectably up about 88.7% to about 115 million. But here's my worry the margins are down because net profit actually drops from 10 to 12, what I got from 12 million, sorry, to 10. So it, it did worry me a little bit that there's something that, you know, that cost is getting better of them. And now with the USD and buying construction costs, it could be tough. It is, it is going to be tough, basically. I mean, uh, I mean, just on the note on that, they also uh, last year they changed um, the financial year earning from March to December, and there will be some sort of uh, well adjust, adjustment, so adjustments, so, so, so to speak. But they also have uh, projects in in UAE, right? It's, they, it's also still uh, loss making. For example, the Mina project, you know, you, in, in Abu Dhabi, you know, so they. Oh uh, yeah, they actually had issues with that. Major, issues, major issues with that. Major so. issue, which, which I think has been rectified, but they need still need to uh, rectify on that. All right. So just to sort of wrap up, what actually happened to Zealand today? A uh, little company related to MMC, they actually managed to bag an uh, almost 97 million contract to build a sewage system in Langat, a project that's been in development hell. But here's the worry about the company. Their margins seem to be suffering a little bit and you wonder as a construction company whether cost is going to be an issue. And there's definitely a big need for them to improve cash flow, which is actually still quite negative. But moving on to our broker's call for today, looking at, uh, well... It was kind of a no-brainer because it, it made headlines. If you were reading any kind of financial papers today, you, it would be hard for you not to realize. Top glove, up four and a nine for, well, almost up 5%. To nine ringgit and fifty five. So, what what was the report we we're looking at? Hong Leong, Hong Leong, and JF Apex were 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 invited to their briefing. Yeah, they were invited. I mean, among other analysts, as well to attend to the briefing. And apparently, Hong Leong, they said they came back feeling excited. Its fourth quarter and and FY earnings were at historical high. And apparently, Top Glove told analysts that it's bullish about to achieve a market share of thirty percent. That's one third by twenty twenty from twenty five percent currently. So, what actually Hong Leong did like about the stock was no brainer. Again, like I say, strong USD made them so happy. The USD is strengthened to above the RM4 mark, which hurts for us, but it bodes really well for their earnings. And, uh, you know, they're all low material prices, looking at natural lumber latex prices and uh, nitrile latex prices all fell between like 17% to 2.8%. It's big for them. No wonder they're, uh, you know, prowling for mergers and acquisitions. Correct. They also have, I mean, if you look at the uh, mergers and acquisitions, right, they have a 288 million cash and to fi with 528 million uh, in investment securities. That's a strong watch. It's about 800 million ringgit for the current assets. So Hong Kong Research actually has a buy on this company with 1098 so if at the moment it's like 955 you still have quite an upside, a, a decent bit of upside. JF Apex also buy target price 952, which actually the, the, the share price has already gone past so I think that needs to be revised. So yeah you said strong cash but here is the rub. 
you want strong cash, you want expansion, I think you'll have to say slightly bye-bye to dividends because dividends in uh, 2015 dropped 44% below the 50% policy they usually have. Mm, I mean, that's because they want to conserve cash and expand for the M&A. And you were right, you know, whether you actually expand for CapEx or you actually expand, uh, you know, um, uh, acquire a company for that. So would you like this company if it gave you dividend or would you like it because of the ambitious plans? I mean, it's hard not to dis argue with the fact that it's the biggest rubber producer in the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's but it's expensive and it is expensive at 9.55. You know, maybe I want to I want to propose to Transilium we try to actually do a share split where I can uh, actually well, we'll buy. We'll have to see. Stock. But would you would you actually at 9.55 you'd want to buy for the dividends or would you buy for capex for capital appreciation? So it's a double edged sword, Nadia. I think I would buy for dividends basically. You know, so that to eat, I mean I, I like this company with a stable dividend and yeah, exactly. strong fundamentals. But the funny thing is, they say they want to acquire one company a year. From where I am not really sure, but it's big aspirations as far as I can tell. So yeah, just to sort of run it all home. Our broker's call for today is Top Glove. The analysts love it. Let's be very frank. They absolutely adore it. Hong Long has buy. JF Apex has a buy, although JF Apex uh, target price is actually over well undershot. Uh, the company is very much looking benefiting from this weak US dollar and of course the oh sorry strong US dollar excuse me I had dreams there for a minute strong US dollar and the weak uh, raw material prices. But uh, I think for those of you looking for dividends, it's going to be very, very tough because they say they're doing more M&A, so you got to hold out for that. But that's all that we have today for Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Suhi Azman. If you want more on the stories we were talking about, the edgemarkets.com is there for you. And of course, uh, you can pick up a copy of the Edge Financial Weekly or Financial Daily. Good night and don't worry, you'll always be back in time. <laughs>